lot has been said about Jerusalem below and Jerusalem above, referring to what this holy city represents, its spiritual meaning and the city itself. This place called the Shiloh Tunnel is an example of how ancient Jerusalem became what it is today. The story of the tunnel goes back to the Canaanite regime. We're standing within the Canaanite fortifications where the Gihon Spring provided water to the rest of the city. And as you can see behind me, we can see the reservoir, a pool that was chiseled into the rock, we can see around us, that filled up this pool that gathered water together. And that way, many people could gather and bring up water from the Gihon Spring to the city, usually during siege. But still, not just during siege, this pool would have been filled. People would come here on a daily basis and gather together, gossip, talk about all sorts of stuff on a daily basis. Um, as you can see, if you look down, that pool is empty. The tunnels are mentioned in the Bible several times as the city of Jerusalem continues to be a major urban, political and economic center during the Bronze and Iron Age. If we go back 3,000 years ago, 1,000 BC, that's the year that King David will capture the Canaanite slash Jebusite city and turn Jerusalem to the United Kingdom of the 12 tribes of Israel. When King David dies, his son Solomon will be anointed king. He will reign for 30 years. He will build the first temple. But when King Solomon dies, the kingdom of Israel, the united kingdom of Israel, splits into two. Up north, we have the kingdom of Israel. And from Beit El south, we have the kingdom of Judea. Two different kingdoms, and they are subjects of different empires reigning around the world. One of those empires, the Assyrian Empire. We're going back now to the 700s BC. In the year 725 BC, the Kingdom of Israel decided to rebel against the, the empire or the Assyrian Empire by stopping to pay their taxes. And that's when the Assyrian Empire will come down with a hammer on the Kingdom of Israel. They will demolish them completely. The 10 lost tribes are from that period of time. The book of Chronicle 2 mentions how the water cisterns in Jerusalem were used to defeat the enemy. After all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judea. He laid siege over the fortified cities, thinking to conquer them for himself. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and his military staff about blocking off all the water from the spring outside the city, and they helped him. They gathered a large group of people who blocked all the springs and the stream that flowed through the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty water? they said. Then they worked hard repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. This is amazing. What do we learn from all this? We learn that Hezekiah took action. The spring, the Gihon spring, is situated outside the city of David. And he asks the question, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And what will he do? He'll gather all his people together and they will divert the direction of the water flow that is without the city directly into the city. The Bible continues telling us that the Assyrians did encamp against Jerusalem, did siege the city. And after a few weeks, an angel of God came over here and striked 185,000 Assyrian soldiers, Jerusalem was saved thanks to that effort made by Hezekiah, the king of Jerusalem. The Shiloan inscription is one of the few remains from the first Jewish temple era. It is now housed in an Istanbul museum. The amazing thing is that over 100 years ago, two children walked from the other end of the aqueduct or an aqueduct. They start touching the wall on their right and they feel something very funny inscribed on the wall. They will call their teacher, a scholar, an engineer in the name of Conrad Sheik. He will light up a torch, and this is what he will reveal. The Shiloh inscription. 
This inscription was written in ancient Hebrew. We're able to read this ancient inscription, the Shiloh inscription. This is a message left by the Masons, by the workers of Hezekiah after building the national aqueduct here in Jerusalem. The Shiloan tunnel continued to play a significant role later in history. This is actually the end part of Hezekiah's tunnel. And what we're seeing over here are remnants from a Byzantine church, meaning built over here during or in the mid 400s. What the Byzantines wanted to do while they reigned in Jerusalem was to commemorate the miracle that Jesus performed here in the pool of Siloam by curing the blind or when he cured the blind. The Jewish Gemara text says that 10 measures of beauty were given to the world. Jerusalem received nine while the rest of the world received one. A tour to the bottom of this city shows us that beauty can be found here underground. A few years after the state of Israel was founded, the national project Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion and Levi Eshkol after that decided to invest in was the national water carrier of Israel. Because without the water, you don't have a state. And without a safe route to the water here in ancient Jerusalem, the city cannot stand a siege, a war. And that explains why throughout history, every empire controlling this place will invest a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money to build their national water carrier for the city. Water is life.